Welcome to this Q&A of the day video in association with TLC Electrical Wholesaler, renowned for quality, value, and customer service. In today's video, we're going to answer the question, how does Amendment 1 to BS7671 affect the installation of an EV charge point? And to help us answer this question, we're going to head over to Lineside Studios, where Gary is with Dr. Chris Horn of My Energy, the creators of the Zappy Charger, who's going to help to explain some of those key points to us. Over to you, Gary. So I have the great pleasure today to be joined by Dr. Chris Horn, Chartered Electrical Engineer and Director at My Energy. Welcome, Chris. Hi, okay. Gary. We're going to be looking at Amendment 1 of BS7671 and how that means that an electrician has to think maybe slightly differently about installing EV charging points when the supply to the installation is a TNCS earthing arrangement. What points would you like to raise, Chris? Well, I think the first thing to do is, is to understand why Amendment 1 was brought in. So when the 18th edition regulations were issued, they almost made it mandatory to use uh, an extra earth rod yeah. when you're installing a, a charge point outside. And that was the, the change from before where it was sort of, you did a risk assessment, it was every single installation just about needed one. Now that's a pain for installers, as we all know, because you know Mrs. Goggins has just had a nice new uh, tarmac drive laid, you, you're gonna turn up and dig that up, that's not gonna happen. Uh, you've got buried uh, services you've got to avoid, you've got to make sure the earth rod is uh, installed in accordance with the regulations, which can be a nightmare in its own right. So a real nightmare for, for installers. So yeah, under the 18th edition, we were going around when we stabbing these earth electrodes in, hoping, to, yeah, stabbing yeah, them. Sorry, hoping okay. to miss those services underneath. Yeah. However, and I think when Amendment 1 came in, it was the bit that I focused on you know, probably most about that change. There was a big change with the earth rod then, wasn't there? It, it was, yeah. In Amendment 1, the IET were trying to help the in industry, help get more charge points installed, promote, say, a couple of electric vehicles so why make it difficult yeah, if we good. can do it safely other ways yeah it makes sense um, so amendment one was consulted on and issued and it really gets to the point where an earth rod is not the norm it's it's the exception now that you need an earth rod yeah there was all, all, all kinds of difficulty about getting it a different potential maybe to buried metal work the yeah. frame of a building yeah. yeah and those type of things so it gone from being the solution in the 18th to mm, yeah. maybe yeah, we're not we're really looking at so what are the solutions then all right so there's, there's five ways of doing this some are slightly more practical than others. So the first one is if you're on a, a property with a three-phase supply and you can guarantee that the load on that three-phase supply is balanced in all circumstances, you don't need an earth rod. At all times? At all times, yeah. Well, so, we we'll read the exact text, but that's the implication. So I need to balance all three of my line conductors at all times in order that that's a safe solution to get it. That one ain't gonna work, is it? No, okay. Maybe in some industrial circumstances you get that. But. Okay. Uh, so number two is you bury a shed load of copper in the ground oh, well, let's and do that then. improve so your primary earth for the It's got to be the way forward. So, so where we were worried about maybe making a small hole for a, for a chamber for an earth electrode, we yeah. now dig up the entire driveway yeah. and bury metal work in that. So that's yeah. the new Exaggerating solution. for emphasis, yeah. but yeah, you've got the idea. Yeah. Yeah, so. Probably not going to do that one either then, are we, Chris? No. Okay. <laughs> so then you get to the ones that are, are more practical. So the third, indent three, talks about a three-phase installation. Right. And here, the, 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 the text is all about making sure that the voltage to ground to yep. earth to true earth yes. doesn't go above 70 volts okay and you've got various things about you've got a trip within five seconds you shouldn't reclose as the fault's still there it's, 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 yeah and that's a, sort of a monitoring device that will look at that is that right uh, yeah so the regulations sort of imply you can do it with a, a, a small earth electrode and monitor to earth right again you've still got the problems with how that's installed and protected and all the rest of it or you can do it inside the three-phase charger itself or device by measuring the voltages to, to relation to each other. So you can do it with a protective device. So it's, that's, that's quite technical. What's number four? Uh, number four, well, this was the one for uh, single-phase installations. Uh, so here you're taking your cable, you're extending your earth outside the property on a single-phase uh, charger. And here it was a real simple test. What's the measurement between the line voltage and the neutral? Yes. And if they go outside of a certain range, yes, uh, 207 to 253 volts. Is that 10% either way? 10% of 230, yep, exactly. Okay. If it goes outside that range, then you've got to trip the output and you've got to isolate your line neutral and earth conductors. Okay, that sounds a little bit more simple maybe for the, the electrician to understand. So it's got a voltage parameters. If it stays within them, the device yep. is, is okay. When it drops without them, it's suggesting there's a pen fault yep. and the device will disconnect all live conductors and the protective conductor? It is, yeah. Okay, so that's indent four. Yeah. What's indent five? So indent five was all about the IET want to promote innovation. They don't want to just write a standard and people continue to create that. 
If you can do it in a safer or more cost-effective way, they want to promote that. And Indent 5 basically says, if you can make the installation as safe as you would with Indent 3 or 4, yeah. then you can do that using modern state-of-the-art technology. So it's, it's allowing manufacturers uh, to cut and entrepreneurs, you know, to come up with new ways of doing things that make it cheaper and easier to install EV charge points and safer, strictly. Yeah. So, Indent 5 is the one maybe that eFix would love that phrase, making electricians' life easier. Yes. They've left that indent in there because they believe that technology would have, would have caught up with the ability to make the installation safe. Yeah, and potentially safer because safer. Like if we look at three and four in a bit more detail, you can see where there are gaps in the rules which could still leave you with a, a voltage above 70 volts for potentially a long time which could cause injury. And now they usually call that indent 5, I think it's the unicorn of the uh, electrical industry because there yeah. isn't a device out there is there that meets indent 5, is that true? Uh, yeah, I mean, people, the unicorn device was the one people were hunting for forever uh, to replace the earth rod. Um, there is a device, we make one. Who's that? Uh, My Energy. My Energy yeah, make the, effectively the unicorn device. Yeah, and that's the one behind us here. So we have protection built into the Zappi yeah. that will protect you. You don't need an earth rod right. and it covers fully complies with Indent 5, which means that you can install the Zappi on any system. And is that, is that are the IET aware of the fact that you've come up with a piece of kit that actually is Indent 5? Yes, they are. Um, so during the, the consultation period, uh, we had the IET came and visited us. We spent a day looking at what we did and, and the protection. Um, you know, the IT won't declare okay. that a device is one way or the other. They will just listen to the state of the art. But after that meeting with them, the amendment was extended and IDENT 5 was added, okay. allowing us to use our technology as we, we you know, we're very happy to do. And, and one thing I liked about your technology is it, it follows all the things we discussed there, but also other things simply like if the CPC is not present to the charging unit, yeah. it also, also detects that and will operate as well. Yeah, exactly. So this protection will prevent you getting a dangerous electric shock in all circumstances. Okay? Right, okay. You might find you get a tingle because the voltage is raised, yeah. but you will not get a dangerous electric shock. It will clear the full and, and open the output before you know, it's on milliamps, it, it's what it measures and trips on that. And um, just to remind people that that voltage is not touch voltage 50 anymore for EV charging points, it's touch voltage AC at? 70 volts. 70 volts. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's a slight different thinking. Everybody's looking through the regulations, looking at 50 volts, 50 volts. Yes. It's actually touch voltage between the palm and the foot. Is that where we get the 70 from, I think? So it, it's, well, okay, there's uh, some studies on what happens when people get electric shocks. And there's a different international study on this, which, which is where the reference comes from. Um, you know, the impact of, of that voltage depends on, you know, on men, men are less susceptible than women, children are more susceptible than adults, if you're wet, you're standing or standing in long grass. Yeah. You know, there's lots of factors, but that 70 volts is deemed to be the threshold where protection needs to operate in order to stop uh, anybody having a dangerous shock. Yeah, it's good. And all of those technologies are built into the Zappi 2, along with this lovely one about the broken CPC. Yeah. And you use those words, it's safe, yeah. and then you extend it on in all circumstances, yeah. which if, is a if, nice if you're in a situation where you there is a current flowing through the Zappi if into a route it shouldn't do, i.e. through you, it will trip and do so before you get a dangerous electric shock. And all of these scenarios are under broken pen conditions. Yeah. We're gonna take a, an in-depth look at this in a second video and explore some of the situations where there may be a broken pen and actually doesn't clear the fault and creates a dangerous situation. So make sure you check out that second video. Thank you very much for your time, Chris. Thank you.